Over half a century of diplomatic silence and suddenly a historic shift. On Wednesday, USAID contractor Alan Gross was released after serving five years in prison in Cuba. This is great. Just moments later, the Obama administration announced a complete overhaul of U.S. policy towards the island nation. We intend to create more opportunities for the American and Cuban people and begin a new chapter among the nations of the Americas. A re-establishment of diplomatic ties means the easing of financial and travel restrictions for U.S. citizens, including families and government and humanitarian workers. But for some, it's a bittersweet victory. Here we have the beginning of the lifting of this immoral and, and e frankly illegal blockade of Cuba so American people can start to learn more about how there are different ways to live in this world as opposed to this capitalist exploitative way. What's happened today is a start but it's not enough. So long as the U.S. government uses the blockade, which is an act of war that deprives the Cuban people of food, medicine, what they're entitled to to live, that's still war against Cuba. President Obama can't the lift the 54-year-old economic embargo on his own. That would require approval from Congress and a removal of Cuba from the U.S.'s state sponsor of terrorism list. Included in the changes are plans to open a U.S. embassy in Havana and also a Cuban embassy here in Washington. But activists say that they'll continue to protest until the embargo is lifted once and for all. In Washington, I'm Alexandra Hall for Telesur.